This meeting uh, is being hosted by Goiter uh, in collaboration with the Veneto Bank Foundation in Venice, Italy. Allow me to introduce our first speaker, uh, Dr. Diego Ponzin. Uh, Dr. Ponzin received his medical degree from the University of Padova and is currently serving as a medical director and cornea consultant at the Veneto Bank Foundation in Italy. His area of research interests are uh, eye banking, selective keratoplasty procedures, epithelial and endothelial regenerative medicine. It has been a wonderful journey working with him for almost a decade now, and I could have not asked for a better mentor than him. It is my great pleasure to welcome Dr. Ponzin uh, to give the warm uh, welcome note to every one of you. Over to you, Dr. Ponzin. Hello, um, good evening, everybody. It's my pleasure to welcome to the DMAC world tonight. Uh, Decimate membrane endothelial keratoplasty is uh, a procedure that is uh, that can be defined uh, extraordinary in terms of selectivity and uh, visual rehabilitation result. At the same time, it can be defined uh, a challenging procedure, either intraoperatively uh, and in terms of uh, uh, follow up, patient follow up. Uh, for this reason, uh, we uh, regard with much consideration any initiative that is aimed at uh, standardizing and improving either uh, the donor um, procedure related to the surgery or the surgical procedure. And uh, we have been uh, very glad in this context uh, to cooperate uh, with uh, uh, the Goider company that offered us the possibility to validate and made some preclinical and clinical validation on, uh, uh, of uh, their new tool. That, uh, as you can see um, in the following presentation, is uh, uh, an innovative way to um, hold, to transport, and to deliver the uh, delicate the MAC tissue inside the recipient eye. So uh, in, in, for this reason, I'm very honored to welcome the, 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 the speaker that will follow my greetings. And uh, again, I thank the Goider company and also my passionate staff who contributed uh, to this uh, enterprise, in particular, Dr. Gabriela Voices, that is, uh, uh, the leader scientist at the foundation involved in this project. Um, I think that I have no more to say at this uh, time, and I pass the testimony again to uh, Dr. Moit Parekh. Uh, Moit has joined our group, as he said, uh, more or less 10 years ago. He is a passionate and uh, uh, volcanic scientist. Uh, he was involved since the very beginning in uh, uh, validation and uh, exploitation of new eye banking and surgical techniques uh, on endothelial keratoplasty. And so I think uh, that uh, his contribution will be welcomed by all the audience. Thank you very much, and I hope you will enjoy the webinar. Thank you, Dr. Ponzin. Um, I'll, I'll take the, the first um, presentation tonight. Uh, I'll just take the audience uh, towards a journey where we, where we started the preload at DMAC. Uh, that was almost probably about five years ago, five to six years ago when we started exploiting the preload at DMAC um, story. Uh, I don't have any uh, potential uh, conflicts of interest. Um, in terms of preload at DMAC, where it all started. So basically, uh, when, we, when we were uh, exploiting the, uh, the loading of the endothelial keratoplasty tissues, uh, we, we started with uh, the pre-cut tissues at the Veneto Eye Bank Foundation, and then we jumped to pre-loading the tissues in the, in the smart storage glide, uh, which, was, which was all 3D made and 3D printed. And we also did a lab and clinical validation for, for such devices. And um, more or less, the, the lab and the clinical study showed uh, similar results as, our, uh, as, as the conventional DSEC techniques. Uh, the idea behind the preloading of DMEC uh, with the endothelium inwards, especially, uh, was basically to understand whether the tissues actually flap out automatically inside the recipient eye, similar to what we see in the DSEC tissues. So once the DSEC tissues are stored in, in, a, in, a, in a glide, 
uh, once it's removed uh, and transplanted inside the recipient eye, we usually see that the flap opens up uh, very easily. And this was the whole idea behind, uh, behind the endothelium inwards uh, DMAC preloaded technique. So what we did was to, to rather uh, peel the, the DMAC tissue and put it in PBS and then uh, allow the tissue to roll it uh, outwards with the endothelium outwards automatically. Instead of that, we, we rather uh, manually folded the tissue on the, on the cornea itself, uh, like a taco. So uh, we like two flaps and uh, overlapping each other and then uh, added both of them. Uh, so basically the whole taco fold was then uh, gently loaded on an IOL cartridge. This was the very first prototype that we were using for the preloaded DMAC. And uh, this taco uh, was actually then loaded on the IOL cartridge and then pulled inside the funnel of the IOL cartridge. And this funnel, the, the diameter of the funnel was, was almost exact uh, that, that we wanted to maintain the architecture of the, of the endothelial graft. And uh, this taco fold was then maintained inside the funnel uh, of the cartridge where we also added transport media, which is a preservation media for the endothelial cells. And we blocked the, uh, this entire device from both the ends, from the rear and the front and uh, we preserved it in the, uh, in the, in the, in the transport media. Uh, what we found in the laboratory setting was that uh, the stripping and the loading time was about 20 to 25 minutes. Uh, and the ECL post-preservation uh, was about 4.35% uh, with the uncovered areas uh, reaching up to 8%. And this was uh, our first uh, endothelium inwards preloaded tissue uh, publication in, back in 2016. Uh, followed by, by which we also compared the endothelium inwards and the endothelium outwards method. And what we found was that the loading time with the endothelium inwards method was, was significantly higher compared to the endothelium outwards method. This is basically because the endothelium inwards method uh, requires manual maneuvers and a loading of the, of the graft compared to the endo out method where, where the, the tissue is almost ready and you just need to aspirate it inside the, uh, inside the modified Jones tube or any other uh, uh, cartridges. However, the time to unfold the graft inside the recipient eye was significantly lower with the endothelium inwards method because the graft opens up automatically inside the, uh, inside the recipient eye compared to the endo out method where you have to, uh, to play with the, with the tissue inside the, inside the eye to, uh, to attach to the, to the stroma. Uh, we also ran uh, the preloaded DMAC uh, clinical study using the, uh, using the same cartridge. And uh, we, uh, this was performed by Professor Massimo Buzin in Italy. And this was uh, the, the first one uh, with a preloaded endothelium inwards. Uh, we found that the preparation time was about 26 minutes with surgical time less than nine minutes. Uh, the BSCBA and uh, the endothelial cell loss was, was comparable with the, with the conventional uh, DMAC uh, clinical outcomes. Uh, this is a very quick uh, video to, to show uh, the, the actual functioning of the endothelium inwards method. So once the, the device is inside the recipient eye using the, uh, the microincision forceps, uh, it's just, the graft is actually delivered inside the the eye is just pulled uh, inside the eye. Uh, pull through uh, technique allows a full control of the of the graft inside the inside the eye. And once it's pulled inside uh, inside the eye, it, it just needs a, a gentle tapping on the on the surface of the eye. And uh, this this basically opens up the whole tissue. So this this does not require a lot of maneuvers inside the inside the eye. So basically, uh, the whole tissue can be grafted uh, within, within, within less than nine minutes, as, as we have already found. Uh, air, uh, just an air temperament to, uh, to attach the, the graft to the stroma, and a very nice uh, graft, uh, grafting was completed. Also, uh, over here, we, we also found that the F mark was, was uh, visible at about three months, but it fades off uh, with time. Sometimes we don't get F mark after, uh, even after one day or two days. So that, that completely depends. Uh, in terms of endothelium outwards method, it's already been, uh, it's already been uh, uh, visualized and analyzed. 
um, the endothelium outward method is uh, is already being used in the United States, and uh, it has it has we have found that the ECL is almost similar to to the other endothelium uh, inwards and outward method, and uh, it also shows a similar uh, uh, similar clinical outcomes compared uh, as compared to the conventional DMAC uh, transplants. Uh, this is the preloadable device that that we'll be talking about today, and uh, this is the this is the one that uh, that's coming from the coder uh, for the for the preloading. Uh, preloaded DMEC has been shown uh, to be to be massively taken up by many eye banks, and a lot of publications have come in in, uh, in, in very quickly in, in the last five years, and we are hoping that this will be the the next game changer. So the the take home message is that the preloading DMAC, uh, both endo and endo, endo in and endo out, is very easy to use. It's time saving, it's hassle free for both the, uh, the clinicians and the patients sometimes. Uh, the clinical outcomes uh, are similar to the surgeon prepared DMAC graphs, and the endo in and endo out both have shown similar clinical outcomes. Uh, whether it is cost effective or not, uh, it still needs to be evaluated, and this is something that is uh, ongoing. Uh, I thank all my collaborators uh, at the Venetra Bank Foundation, Goiter, UCL Institute of Ophthalmology, Morpheus, and Royal Liverpool uh, University Hospitals. And thank you for your kind attention. Without uh, wasting any further time, I'll just uh, go on to our next speaker. Uh, that's Dr. Professor uh, Sherman. Uh, Professor Sherman is an ophthalmologist, scientist, and, and uh, the director of the eye clinic in Schulzburg at the Knappschaft Clinic SAR in Germany. His key interests are in the development of new surgical techniques that includes uh, biotechnological and biomedical tissue replacement, both in retinal and corneal surgery, and stem cell therapy. Prof. Uh, Sherman holds uh, several international patents, including the Goiter DMEC glass cartridge and DMEC rapid, uh, that have contributed to the development of the, uh, of the DMEC uh, transplantation. Um, I'll hand it over to you, uh, Dr. Sherman. Thank you very much for the nice introduction and good afternoon. So just a few words on the working principle and handling of the preloaded DMEC. You have heard 13 years of DMEC and we have, um, you get used to it that it's a five minute procedure. Next, please. Um, but in fact, uh, it has been a long way with multiple evaluations of several groups worldwide. I just show you for uh, two minutes uh, most important milestones. The next, and the first was the no touch technique um, with uh, with the uh, first um, cartridge to inject. Before we had only an IOL cartridge, and this is. Uh, uh, a glass cartridge which allows um, the visual control of the perfect uh, orientation. Um, on the left side, you have the preoperative situation with a stained and DMEC lamella ready to inject. And the second was um, the liquid bubble technique, uh, which we have presented in 2014. It's published and it works. Unfortunately, all the videos are not active um, in this presentation. With this liquid bubble technique, um, we have the possibility to prepare the DMEC lamella within two minutes by injecting um, in the sub-decimate uh, space uh, Tripan Blue. Uh, with a 99% uh, success rate. And the advantage is that we have a staining on the, only on the decimate uh, surface of the DMEX. So the endothelial, the delicate endothelial cells um, are not in contact with the dye. In 2015, we have professionalized by preparing all DMEX cartridge in the clean room tissue bank. The next, please. Personally, I think that it's very important to give an example that um, the tissue is prepared under highest quality um, situations. It is European law and this will be the future for all eye banks in the near future. Um, in 2016, we have introduced together with Goida the precut tissue with Goida and the DGFG. Next, please. 
Um, the idea behind, and uh, you have also mentioned it um, before, is to separate the implantation from the preparation. I'm absolutely convinced that the DMEC implantation can be easily learned by an experienced anterior segment surgeon, so not, not necessarily by a corneal um, surgeon, but the preparation is still a problem and bears some risk if you have a tearing and it's much better to outsource it in the tissue bank where experienced medical doctors or even uh, technicians um, do the preparation. If they do five or 10 preparations per day, then they are even better than, than me as a corneal surgeon. Um, so this was the idea behind that the preparation is done separately and the surgeon um, gets a ready to use uh, lamella and he can load the goiter cartridge with it and then implant it. Next, please. Um, in Germany, we have only two eye banks which are allowed to deliver um, this pre-cut uh, tissue, Sulzbach and Hannover. Next, please, where it's prepared under highest quality conditions. And um, we have currently two techniques. Hannover uses the Lamech technique, which is a manual stripping with a centrally adherent part. Um, so it does not swim away. And in Sulzbach, we prepare it with a liquid bubble technique. Next, please. So, and now we are, of course, proud, and that's why we are sitting here to present the preloaded um, DMEC cartridge, so the um, DMEC Rapid. And the idea behind was to preload it, it in a goiter cartridge, which is similar to the standard injection cartridge. This transport cartridge is about 50% of volume um, bigger than the normal goiter cartridge for injection. So it can be, uh, it can be loaded and transported it, but the surgeon can take it and inject the DMEC directly from the transport cartridge. The next, please. Um, that's how it's um, delivered. So on the right, you see the blue stained DMEC, which is already preloaded in the cartridge. On the left, you see the stained, the pre-stained DMEC roll. And uh, if the surgeon receives the, um, this preloaded cartridge, it's very easy to restain it if it's necessary because it's closed, but there is a ventil and you can inject tripen blue and the DMEC still stays within the transport cartridge within the DMEC rapid. And then you can inject BSS and so it's diluted again. Next, please. And then the surgeon just uh, puts a syringe to it and it's ready to inject uh, like you uh, like. Um, we've done a study, um, there are currently several studies in every country, um, so it's in Germany, it's already approved. Um, we have shown um, that, the, that the DMEC Rapid is as safe as the viewing chamber. We had a prospective study with uh, two groups, viewing chamber versus DMEC Rapid. Next, please. And um, yeah, the result is quite easy neither in the viewing chamber, next please, nor in the DMEC uh, rapid cartridge, there was a significant cell loss within five days. Next please, so it's uh, approved and can be delivered, but every country has uh, asked their own um, officials, official departments for official approval. The good idea is that if it's prepared with a liquid bubble technique, then the staining, the blue staining of the, uh, of the DMEC lasts um, for about two days. So normally it's delivered to the surgeon already pre-stained. If it's not enough, you can restain it, but in many cases it's even enough to just take it without restaining and you can see the and the blue contours. The next, please. So it's approved since 2019. It's ready to inject and it's uh, called and marketed as DMEC 
rapid. And of course, I'm very proud about the good work of Goider, who have done an excellent job to deliver a high quality product as a ready to use product. A cataract surgeon is used to to use a, a preloaded IOL cartridge, and it's a quite natural step to uh, deliver now a ready to use preloaded DMEC rapid cartridge for DMEC uh, uh, surgery. Next, please. That's a preloaded um, DMEC. Next. And um, th that's what we are doing now. And the next. Um, you can look for the video, it's on our YouTube channel. If you just uh, Google YouTube Sulzbach, then you find it. It's a live surgery of the first preloaded DMEC with a DMEC repeat. And uh, next, please. These are the videos we skip. Next, you can see it on the YouTube channel. Next. And if you are interested, we have in April a DMEC intensive course. Um, uh, where you can learn the DMEC technique in a wet lab course and next, and that's it, I think. Thank you very much. Okay, so uh, I'll quickly jump to, to our next speaker. Uh, that's uh, Ms. Gabriela Wojcik. Uh, as uh, Dr. Diego Ponten said, uh, she's, uh, she's a driving force behind the, behind the preloaded DMEC uh, rapid in, uh, in, in collaboration with Goiter, with FPOV. Uh, she's basically a research assistant at the Venetia Bank Foundation uh, with, a, with a bachelor's degree uh, in, in biology, uh, specialization in cell biology uh, at uh, Jagiellonian University at Krakow, Poland. And her research focus is on DMAC surgery, innovations, and human corneal endothelial cell culture. Over to you. So, good afternoon. My name is Gabriela Wojcik and I'm a researcher in Fundazione Banca delle Occhi in Venice, in Italy. I have no commercial interest in disclosure. I will tell you a little bit about validation we done with the aided demographic system and also update you on the clinical study uh, we are currently on. Recently, we published the rapid validation uh, results on the Corneama magazine. We divided our rapid validation in two parts. Study A, which was the in laboratory four day transport simulation in the room temperature on the laboratory rockets with two different media types tissue culture media and transport media. And the second part, study B, was the cross country transport done in 72 hours when we preload our tissue in Italy and sent them to UK to be analyzed. We used the transport media for that. In our in-laboratory four-day transport simulations, we noticed after the ejections from DMED rapids during the uh, tripan blue uh, staining, a little number of tripan blue positive cells. Our ECL analysis show the 14 percentage on tissue uh, after transport simulations of ECL in tissue culture media compared to 11 and half percentage of in transport media. Alexandrian red, uh, red staining showed the little tissue scattering, uh, like the uh, immunostaining showed the high presence of the calcium AM positive cells and low percentage of the um, ethylene homodimer percentage cells, so suggesting that demographic system preserved the tissue. We also noticed the presence of cellular occurrence uh, on our bone media types, which proved to us that the demographic system protects the morphology of the tissue. Light that analysis show that in tissue culture media, there was the 79 percentage of the viability of the cells compared to 81 percentage in um, tissue um, in transport media. That result was not statistically significant, but we decided to proceed with transport media in our study B. In our cross-country transport, we noticed um, that there will be there were little tissue scattering and triple blue positive cells, but all orientated in the edges of the of the tissue, which suggests that it happens because of the force of manipulation. Alizani red staining showed no tissue scattering, like that immunostaining showed the high levels of calcium and AM positive cells. We also detect the, the presence of zonular occurrence. Our live analysis just show us that the tissue has eight 
around 85% of survivability, and ECL after transport was in three and a, a little bit more than three percentage. Data results and the overall design of the demographic system make us believe that this device is um, great for your eye binds to provide high quality tissue right after the surgeon's uh, surgical theaters. Our clinical study, um, we work with five centers in Italy and UK with five surgeons, and each of them have different endo out uh, surgery experience. The surgeons recruit for us 25 patients suffering for foot dystrophy. Currently, for, food, for, for today, four surgeons uh, done for 20, 12 surgeries, both in Italy and UK. We have some preliminary results from one patient from Dr. Pia Leon. And you can see on the middle picture the F mark uh, just after, after surgery and the, how the eye, the, surgery, the clean cornea look after one month after surgery. The bathymetry and optical coherence topography showed there's a visible difference on the thickness of the tissue, suggesting that the graft works properly. Dr. Vito Romano provides us with the results after one week after surgery, also showing very similar results with very clean cornea. And the pachymetry and optical coherence tomography suggesting also that the tissue is thinner and the graft works properly. I'm going to show you the, the surgery video uh, done by the Dr. Vito Romano. The, the surgeon is taking the uh, holder with the goiter device introduce it on, on top of it. Everything is transported in these little bottles, uh, which are standard uh, bottles for, uh, for the uh, tissue, uh, tissue banking. Tissues are introduced to the cartilages, which is the rare part, which is the shorter part, and the front part, frontal part, which is the longer. Both parts have to be introduced to the device to make sure that the tissue is going to stay inside. The device is designed in the way that you can see the mark if you are requested to, to have it on the tissue. Overall, the surgeon is able to stain the tissue uh, and wash it inside the device um, without any problem. Here, surgeon is staining it by trip and glue and it's going to be washed by uh, the salt solutions. The whole procedure is standardized, but it requires the learning curve. However, the elder surgeons we are working with uh, reported that it's, the process is easy to learn. Here the tissue is on the frontal part of the device, so it's probably going to be easier for the surgeon to introduce it to the anterior chamber. Surgeon is unplugging the um, rear part of the device. And that's the place when he's going to introduce the syringe and um, put directly into the device into the patient eye. After introducing, the surgeon uh, is unrolling the tissue and putting the one bubble of the air to make it sure of the attachments of the tissue. Thank you. Uh, I'll move on to our next uh, speaker, uh, Professor Vincenzo Scorcia. Uh, Professor Scorcia received his master degree from the University La Sapienza uh, of Rome and is currently head of ophthalmology department of the University of Mania Grecia in Catanzaro, Italy. He completed a cornea and external disease fellowship with Professor Massimo Buzin based in Italy. His area of clinical practice are cornea, cataract and refractive surgery with interest 
in cataract and refractive surgery research and lamellar and endothelial keratoplasty research. Over to you, Professor Scott here. Thank you, Moit. I would like to thank Goider and uh, Benito for high information for the support. There is my financial disclosure. I do not have any financial interest to disclose related to this presentation. Next. This is my first surgery with the preloaded DMAC graft. This is a patient with Fuchs nodular dystrophy. I mark the epithelial surface uh, to choose the proper size where the dash mat has to be removed. And I usually prefer to uh, remove the, the dash mat uh, with uh, continuous air fluid air coming from the machine because uh, it takes the arterial chamber firm. This is how the graphs come directly in theater. You can see the, the F. I usually uh, wash the transportation liquid in order to remove the dextrin, and uh, I stain with tribon because uh, there is not much stain with the graft. And uh, after that, I, I check for the F sign mark in order to, to select the proper orientation. I put the, the graphs on a bright contrast, usually white contrast, in order to check the orientation. And uh, this is the surgery. I inject very slowly in order to avoid misdirection of the graft. But before removing the injector, uh, I simply tap on the wound in order to release some aqueous, thus preventing the graft from escaping from the anterior chamber. And now it comes the most challenging part. I use the double channel cannula technique. So with one cannula, I keep the graft firm, and with the other, I see I tap the anterior corner surface in order to unfold the, the graft. Uh, we need to remove some aqueous from anterior chamber because it works very nice if you keep the anterior chamber shallow. So you have to repeat this maneuver several times. And if you are lucky, it takes a few minutes uh, to complete the graft uh, unfolding. Once you obtain it, the, uh, the unfolding, you have to put the cannula behind the graft and you have to fill the anterior chamber with air. I do not put any stitches if there is no leakage from the wound, so I can uh, lift the eye in this way. Next. So, uh, since my first surgery, I found the injector uh, very easy and safe to use, but the staining of the graft inside the injector may be less effective, but uh, multiple staining could be safely attempted. The difference is because you stain the, the graft underwater and they are more, less effective uh, than uh, you do it uh, under hair, so there is a uh, big difference. But there is no problem because uh, it's possible to, to stain uh, several times the graft. Next slide, please. The small size of opening allows small corner incision, and this is uh, a big advantage because uh, using a uh, uh, small incision, you reduce the risk of graft uh, uh, escaping from the anterior chamber. But on the other side, the back, can you back, please? On the other side, smaller diameter of injector increase the risk of raw configuration of the graft. Next. This is the video showing what I said before. This is a different patient, uh, and as soon as I inject the graft in the chamber, it was very, very uh, narrow. So it's not very easy to open this graft because the roll uh, is very close, and uh, you need a lot of a lot of patience and uh, experience to in order to unfold this graft. You can use a different technique, uh, the double uh, cannula technique. You can also use the cannula with the holes uh, and uh, the, the side because uh, it make, uh, you can uh, inject fluid from the side, but it's not very easy. And uh, you have, if you are not lucky, it may require uh, several minutes, 10, 20 minutes uh, until you have found uh, you can uh, unfold completely the graft. 
Here this is the last part of the surgery. It took uh, 15, 20 minutes uh, until uh, I achieved the, the unfolding and uh, after I fill the eye with uh, hair. Next, please. So the time for donor stripping and preparation is saved. Also, the risk of tissue passage is virtually eliminated. This is a big advantage. And uh, so the, the consequence is that surgical times is reduced in all, almost all cases. However, the unfolding maneuvers remain the only unpredictable issue. Next, please. So uh, the graft comes in, in, uh, in theater with the hand of heart configuration. And uh, in this way, the graft manipulation during graft loading is reduced. And the hand of heart configuration is uh, uh, the most preferred uh, uh, configuration from the, from the surgeon. But on the other side, the end of in configuration, sorry, this is a mistake. This is the end of in configuration may prevent a cell damage from injector, even if the damage is very, very, very minimal. Uh, but the end of in configuration may reduce also the unfolding time because as soon as you introduce the, the, the graft in the arterial chamber, it says to recover its original shape. Next, please. These are our results. We perform preloaded DMEC in six eyes and we record the, the surgical times reduced in all cases. The endothelial cell loss was comparable with the uh, previous technique, even if our follow up is limited only to one month post operative. Next slide. Uh, we need to rebubble two of six patients, but the bubbling rate was not different from uh, the other conventional technique and no other complications were recorded. Next, please. So our tricks, we advise to carefully wash the transportation liquid because the, de the dextran in uh, the liquid may behave like a glue in the anterior chamber. So it's better to completely remove the dextran from the graft. I recommend it to, to stain several times the graft. Usually twice is more than enough to obtain a good staining. And we have to check the mark and accordingly rotate the ejector uh, before inject the graft in the chamber. Because doing in this way and uh, injecting slowly the, the graft, you may prevent the graft upside down uh, position. However, even doing this way, you always run the risk of graft upside down. Next, please. This is what, uh, what happened in this video. I was very happy because I inject very slowly and uh, I was able to open the graft in a few seconds, but as, as soon as I opened the graft, I saw the mark was upside down. So I needed to change orientation. And what I, I can do is to grab the, the tissue from one side with, uh, with the forceps. I open the irrigation from one side. And uh, if you are lucky, it uh, requires a few seconds to rotate the graft and uh, to obtain a uh, proper position. So the, the surgery was completed with hair. Uh, you can uh, check for good position. I think it's done. Thank you. I don't know if uh, there is any question. Thank you, Professor Scotia. Yeah, that, was, that was a very brief uh, clinical experience and insights on this uh, new device. Uh, let me quickly go to our next um, speaker, uh, Mr. Tim Piplau. Uh, uh, Mr. Piplau has a Master's of Science in Business and has uh, held various positions in medical industries and business development and sales. Since 2017, he's uh, also Area Sales Manager at Goiter and Director of Goiter Asia Pacific. Uh, over to you, uh, Mr. Piplau. Thank you and thank you everyone. It's a great pleasure to have over 130 participants here tonight. And we thank, of course, from manufacturer side, all our great partners throughout the past months and the past years. It's been a great pleasure working with you, Professor Schulman, for over a decade now about the DMAC. And we are very, very happy to have such great partners for the DMAC Rapid on board now in Europe, which of course, namely is the FPOV investor 
around the team of uh, Diego Ponzin and Gabriela and also Dr. Ferrari is probably on the line today. Um, we are very proud to call UCLA with Mohit, our partner, and of course also Dr. Romano from Liverpool and Dr. Rahman and Dr. Amacht from uh, Moorfields. So it's a very international collaboration. And we are also partnering here in Germany with the German Tissue Transplantation Society. So it's a great journey so far. And we really see that 13 years have paid off, right? Yesterday, we put the Beatles here. We had the process of very tedious preparation in the OT itself. This costs a lot of time and we've seen multiple times today now, and we heard it a lot from you. Thank you, the faculty that preloaded will be the future. Yeah, we can start today. And as uh, Dr. Ponzin said, uh, very high efficiency and efficacy in the DMAC procedure can be secured by the preloaded. We do have consistent validation and very promising eye bank and surgical results. And as uh, Dr. Parak pointed out, endo in and endo out both work very well. And we hope that everyone is convinced that uh, the DMAC cartridge um, is working very well. And we encourage you to try out this method, of course. As uh, Professor Schumann pointed out, the no touch technique, that's a very big advantage. Everything of the preparation is taking place at the eye bank. And this is what also our clinical studies and our validations have shown so far. So the future will be the preloaded. The benefits, of course, they vary uh, greatly. As uh, Gabriela has pointed out from the iBank side, um, in our validation, we found that um, there is a very minimal cell loss that can be attributed to the transportation process itself. Most of the cell loss is attributed to the preparation and we will always occur this loss. Um, now that we are in the clinical study um, across the nations uh, with five surgeons and 25 patients coming up, we will hope to have more positive results coming soon and that the surgeons can be supported with high quality, ready to use grafts. Professor Scorcher, um, he pointed out very well all the benefits for the surgeons tonight. And of course, we are very yeah, pleased to hear that the risk for tissue wasted is virtually eliminated. So again, um, the time is saved. You have an added security in the OR and you can more reliably plan your OT procedures. And in between the cataract surgeries, you can easily fit in a DMAC surgery by the tool of the DMAC Rapid. In the end, it should be an easy implementation into your standardized workflow. Um, and also he pointed out a few pearls and tricks, for example, that the injection of uh, the graft should happen slowly and that staining before was not a problem. And as the take home mes messages tonight, we would encourage everyone to contact your tissue banks now and ask for the preloaded DMAC Rapid. And of course, also to seize the various possibilities in the community, uh, get in touch with your senior uh, ophthalmology um, surgeon comrades and uh, yeah, participate in wet labs if you have the chance. For example, with Professor Schormann in April next year, or also at the conferences, which we hope will be coming up next year or in 2020 at the very latest. Um, in the end, be an early adopter and enjoy the advantages of the preloaded DMAC. And with this, I would like to hand back uh, to Mohit because now we would like to enter into the Q&A session and we kindly ask you to submit your questions um, by using the Q&A button. And then we as the panelists, we will take up your questions and provide the answers. Okay. Um... Thank you, thank you to all the speakers tonight. Uh, it was was really a great insight to the to the new device and the whole preloading uh, area that that we are working on, uh, including the clinical results and the clinical outcomes, um, and also the laboratory investigation, the cross country validation. So it, it's looked like it looks like uh, we are going towards towards a completely different route now uh, from from PK to pre-strip DMAC and now just jumping over to the preloaded DMAC, uh, both with the endothelium in and endothelium out of this method. So, um, well, we have received a few uh, questions and uh, some, some really interesting questions and uh, some of them which are, which are usually asked to, to a lot of uh, eye banking personnel. So I think I, I should 
really asked this question to Professor, uh, to Dr. Ponzin. Uh, how do we really ensure that the marking stays in? Uh, that is uh, regarding the F or the S uh, mark that we that we put to to figure out the orientation of the graft. And if uh, the marking is lost, then is there a way that we could uh, we could figure out the orientation once the tissue is already inside the recipe and die? So to to Professor Sherman, Dr. Pons, and Professor Scotia, you might want to comment on that. I think there is not really a chance to do an F or an S. Uh, uh, we use a shark marking, which means uh, it's, it's also published uh, by another group and we use it since three years, uh, a small um, um, shark tooth um, is cut to the edge of the DMEC lamella and um, by staining the lamella, you can perfectly see the orientation. And that's what every preparing, DMEC preparing eye bank should do as far as I recommend. I agree, I agree with this uh, comment. I agree too, it's very, it's very rare to, to lose the, the mark uh, in DMEC uh, configuration because uh, because the stain is very, very strong. It lasts uh, several weeks after, uh, or even months after, after the surgery. So it never happened to me. So I can, I can say nothing of different. Well, that's actually uh, very true because we have seen the, um, the, uh, the staining even after three months and all the way up to six months in some patients and it fades off with time. So that, that could easily be, uh, be, be taken care of. Um, the other, uh, one of the very important questions that, that a lot of uh, attendees have been asking is how, we, how do we ensure the microbiological issues for preloaded DMEC? So once the tissue is already inside the, the cartridge and once we ship them, how do we ensure that the tissues are going to be safe uh, when you transplant them? What do you mean with safe? I didn't understand. Uh, so, uh, if so, for for the for all the other tissues, what we usually do is uh, we we have the microbiological checks before we we ship the tissues. Uh, but for the preloaded tissue, it is going to be in another device uh, with the media in. So, uh, exactly before the uh, the transplantation, how do we ensure that the the tissue is safe uh, in terms of microbiology? And it's not contaminated, basically. Yeah. So every um, every preloaded DMEC which leaves the tissue bank um, gets a my microbiological testing before. Um, it's a legal issue in Germany. It's not allowed to to transport it to ship it without this microbiological testing. So, to my opinion, it's the highest quality that even after preparation, we have a microbiological testing. Um, Professor Schumann, the, the question was even more specific. The colleagues from the Netherlands were asking that uh, in the standard before we started with preloading, there was, according to their information in the PI regulation in Germany, that you should perform a culture test after storage um, and, and another one after preparation and then you would ship. And the question was if we could like um, lose this or if we test then in preloading just before implantation or how do we still fulfill those PI um, requirements while we now apply preloaded and, and, and we miss one step? Yes, so I'm not sure how to answer. You have the medium, you can always take a probe from that and uh, do an additional testing if you like. But that's what I exactly thought, that you maintain the storage medium so at any time you could apply the storage medium for doing tests. Yes. I mean, it's important to question the quality control and uh, the high standard of preparation in the standardized manner is certainly one of the main advantages of these standardized uh, um, technique. I think although many surgeons are experienced, but we have no control what happens during preparation and directly after preparation. 
Um, during the time in the tissue bank, everything is standardized. Every For every step, there is a legal quality control. But once the surgeon starts to prepare, we have no legal um, um, uh, quality control. And here, uh, we have just an improvement in this quality control, to my opinion. Good. Despite some questions whether the, the device itself is suitable for hypothermic uh, um, solutions, yes, it is. It's used in the United States for cold storage, like it is uh, used in Europe for warm storage. Many questions were related to um, the handling and how easy it is to wash out the storage solution, how easy it is um, to apply staining inside the cartridge um, without moving the lamella. Maybe some of the colleagues who have been more frequently using it in EOR might answer that question. Maybe um, either Mohit or maybe um, Professor Vincenzo might answer this question. So uh, for the uh, for the cross country uh, validation study when we when we performed so uh, all the tissues were loaded in the in the eye bank in Venice and it came to us for uh, for the validation over here in UK and uh, we uh, it was it was pretty easy basically the the device has two two uh, lids so there's one chamber that fits on the anterior and the other one on the posterior and these both lids have got pores inside. And pores are so small that it can only allow the liquid to flow out when you when you pressurize the liquid, but it does not allow the tissue itself to go out of the uh, of the device. So when you when you uh, fit the tube in and you start aspirating a PBS, it the tissue you can actually see the tissue that's rolling inside the uh, inside the device, but it doesn't really uh, uh, let the tissue out of the device. So you can. You can uh, you can uh, remove all the media from the uh, from the device. You can wash the tissues. You can stain the tissues inside the uh, inside the device if needed. So I mean yes, it's it's it relatively it's uh, it's very easy because because it does not allow the tissue to go out. So you can play in your in your field basically. So you can just wash it and do whatever you want to inside the inside the uh, device. Uh, I did I I. Purposely, I uh, I pushed in a lot of liquid just to see whether there is a lot of endothelial cell damage, and honestly, I mean it, it wasn't really a huge endothelial cell damage um, that was observed because uh, the tissue it, it actually flows with the uh, with the liquid uh, with the liquid itself, so it it kind of opens and shuts, opens and shuts, and that's that's all that's all we have we have observed. So in terms of washing the tissue or, uh, or restaining the tissue, uh, removing the liquid from the device, it's, it's pretty easy. Yes, Mike, if I can add something, I think I agree with you because there is no way for the graft to come out from the injector, even, uh, even if you force the, the fluid injection. But uh, if you can, if you say that if you force the BSS injection, you run the risk to crush the tissue against the, the wall. I don't know how many damage you can induce, but there is no reason to, to force injection because you can simply wash by keeping the graft floating in the middle of the, the injector. So there is, you, you, don't, you don't have to, to inject too much BSS because you can see the, the graph floating and this way you can remove all the dextra from the injector. Yeah, so this was basically when we, when we inject, it, when we infuse a lot of pressure, it was just to validate whether increased pressure can, can damage the endothelial cells or not. But yeah, it, it, it just works well. It, it didn't really induce a lot of endothelial cells. Uh, there are other questions coming up in terms of uh, graft, uh, again, the marking. So if you can uh, done, uh, if, if we can have like a shark tooth marking or uh, F or S or with stain, without stain. So uh, Dr. Ponzin, do you want to, to add on the marking scheme or something? Well, you know, I just uh, um, confirm uh, what has been said before. I mean, uh, marking is done in the eye bank and it's ve very, I, I, do, I don't see possibilities to repeat marking once the, uh, the thin uh, Timec lamella has been isolated and uh, moved out of the cornea. So uh, I think that uh, if the, the, 
the surgeon uh, go thoroughly and slowly uh, while inserting the, the uh, tissue in, in the anterior chamber, as uh, uh, Vincenzo Scorcia pointed out, I think uh, it will be uh, not necessary to, uh, to have uh, the, the mark done again. Uh, and then there are some questions coming in uh, about the uh, the availability in the of the of the device in the UK and uh, also about the the cost of of the device. I, mean, maybe I, I, I could not hear the question. Please, can you repeat it? Oh, it's it's about the uh, DMAC rapid availability in the UK. Whether whether they are allowed to import or. Whether, with, uh, whether you can use it with hypothermic media and uh, an organ culture board. So I think uh, to answer that, uh, we, also, uh, we already have two, two different devices. I mean, it's the same device, but with the two different flasks. And one is made for the hypothermic media and the other one is for the organ culture. Yeah. Um, well, the, uh, the, the, the devices are, are readily available. Uh, it's just a matter of the, of the eye bank, whether they want to I bank and the surgeons uh, whether they want to to ask for the for the preloaded tissues in the border uh, device. So this is this is where we are. I think we are we are almost covered up almost all the questions, and I think we can, we can kind of wrap now. So yes, Mohit, we are like five minutes of the time. It's really difficult to to capture then all the questions which are coming up in in, in writing. Yeah. But I, I invite cordially everybody who was there and didn't get his, his question perfectly answered to drop us a message and then we will follow up offline as good as we can. Nobody will left without an answer. Thank you very mm -hmm. much to the panelists as well as to the audience. It was Thank highly you. appreciated. And, and I wish you all a, a, an enjoyable and relaxed ending of that day. Thank you very much. Thank you. All. Thank you, everybody. Good night. Thank you, all the audience. Thank you, everybody. Grazie, ciao. Bye-bye.